Good evening. Welcome to this edition of Northeast Diary. Here we bring you the latest developments from India's unexplored Northeast region. Friends, in today's edition, we'll take a look at how the music industry in Nagaland is shaping up. We will also hear how saffron is slowly beginning to be grown in Sikkim. In the personality of the week section, we bring you an interview with Padma Shri Yeshi Dorji Thongchi. Beautiful Mizoram is a bird watcher's paradise. In a heritage section today, we shall talk about the avian diversity in Mizoram. Nagaland, the first ever state in India to have recognized music as an industry, has come a long way from rebranding the Music Task Force, MTF, to Task Force for Music and Arts, TAFMA, in 2019. Since then, TAFMA has been in action with a keen eye on how to promote the artists in Nagaland, whether in choirs, singer-songwriters, filmmakers, painters and more. Also, the appointment of Theja Meru as advisor to Tafma last June has especially been instrumental in shaping up an even more vibrant music industry. Since Teja Meru, who himself is a well-known musician in Nagaland, took over the Tafma, there has been several exciting things for the music fraternity and significant collaborations. A most recent one among these is signing a memorandum of understanding with Music Connect Asia. As organizational partners, Tafma and Music Connect Asia will jointly work towards promotion of artists related to music from the region of Nagaland at international platforms. Let's hear it from Teja Meru. Well, uh, this is indeed a, a wonderful uh, initiative taken both by TASMA and uh, Music Connect Asia. Uh, as we, all of us are aware, that under the Music Connect Asia's umbrella, there are 50 country members. And the uh, Music Connect Asia is also made up of major festivals and festival directors. So this puts Nagaland in a very good light and, and also a wonderful opportunity has been created to expose and also take through this uh, medium, our Naga artists uh, to perform and also to highlight what's happening in Nagaland, the music expos and symposiums around the world. With 51 countries and several world-class festivals under the umbrella of Music Connect Asia, this newly forged partner will help spread the rich cultural heritage of the northeast of India within Asia and beyond. The two parties will also jointly organize music summits, music expos and other music related events that will help in growing and adding value to the existing music and arts ecosystem of the state of Nagaland. In its continued effort to help the artist community, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown wherein many of the livelihoods are being affected for the lack of platforms to showcase the works, Tafma helped sell several of the paintings worth over 6 lakhs of rupees. The Musician Incubation Program, or simply known as MyPro, is one of its latest initiatives. Through this program, serious musicians from across the state of Nagaland are being identified and given the challenge of learning 100 cover songs and will be further trained on the basic of performance. Besides its many wonderful initiatives, Tafma also has KM Music Conservatory as its knowledge partner in its endeavor to build knowledge. Dr. A.R. Rahman has personally come forward to help in this regard. Tafma continues to create new vistas and opportunities for musicians in the state of Nagaland to grow beyond its border. For Northeast Diary, this is Asunyo from AIR News, Kohima. Meghalaya, the eighth northeastern state of India, is popular for its story spots as well as rich and spectacular biodiversity. Its rich cultural and ethnic heritage and exotic presence of flora are an appealing fact factor for an immense opportunity for medical tourism. Meghalaya in the northeast provides an opportunity for medical treatment in the region, which means adding new life to health. Our Shillong correspondent Rustam tells us more. Meghalaya is literally pollution-free and is a hub for traditional herbal medicine. The tranquility of the place and its natural medicinal facilities would make the area an excellent wellness retreat for those looking to rejuvenate their body, mind and soul. Meghalaya government in 2010 drafted the Meghalaya State Tourism Policy to promote herbal tourism in the state. The policy states that Meghalaya has immense potential in this segment and can be a leading player in health and wellness tourism where professionally designed programs can be started and delivered like yoga centers, Ayurvedic rejuvenation treatments, besides other. 
Since then, the Northeastern Institute of Ayurveda and Homeopathy, based in Shillong, which is an autonomous health institute under the Ministry of Ayur, Government of India, has been training and enhancing the medicinal skills of indigenous people of the state. As part of the approach to make the state a preferred medical tourist destination, existing herbal medicine center will be promoted in a regulated manner, which will be an important component of wellness tourism. Dr. Abhishek Bhattacharji, head of Department of Panchakarma of the Institute, has to say about making Meghalaya a medical tourist destination and what the Institute is up to. We are developing ourselves to cater in a better way to the people who are coming from the state and also who are coming from outside the state and outside the country also. Actually, we were just planning to talk with the state tourism department, but due to this COVID pandemic, this total procedure was in a fall now. But obviously, because the pandemic situation is resolving and whenever we are open, we should try our level best to make this institution because this is a national institution and this is a try to make this a path to cater for the medical tourism in a better way in future. In due course of time, with sincere efforts from the government of Meghalaya and the Northeastern Institute of Ayurveda and Homeopathy, the state could one day in the near future become a preferred wellness tourist destination. This is Rustam for Northeast Diary from AIR News, Shillong. Saffron production in India, which has been largely restricted to some areas of Jammu and Kashmir so far, may soon find a new destination in Sikkim. Plants from seeds transported from Kashmir to Sikkim and acclimatized there are now flowering in Yang Yang in the state's south district. A Sikkim correspondent, Namo Dixit, tells us all about it. The possibility of saffron cultivation in Sikkim was jointly explored by the Northeast Center for Technology Application and Research under the Center Government's Department of Science and Technology and Sikkim University. Experts from the university's horticulture and botany departments conducted trial cultivation at the Sikkim University campus at Yangyang, South Sikkim in September 2020. Experienced farmers from Kashmir transported more than 100 kgs of saffron bulbs and closely monitored the cultivation. Pradeep Singh from Kashmir, who is the project director of saffron cultivation in Yangyang, South Sikkim, speaks about the project. Three months ago, we have started a trial project of saffron cultivation in Sikkim. The saffron was traditionally cultivated in Kashmir and now it's successfully cultivated in Sikkim also. And in upcoming time, we will try to explore more areas. It will be the life-changing thing for the people of Sikkim and also it will give a good exposure to the tourism department. It will be a good thing. Tourism entrepreneur Rabin Basnet speaks about integrating the Saffron project with tourism. I'm a tourism entrepreneur and I have also been working as a activist for tourism, rural tourism in particular. And, uh, you know, recently we have discovered that uh, saffron cultivation is possible in Yangang. So this could be the first time that, you know, saffron has been successfully experimented outside of Kashmir. Having sat uh, for a meeting with uh, Pradeep Singh, who is heading this project in Yangang, we believe that uh, we can integrate tourism and saffron cultivation and bring something, a unique flavor to this new destination that we are trying to develop. And that is what, uh, you know, we've been working on at the moment. So uh, that is basically what could make this destination unique. Saffron being a very high-valued uh, plant, we can attract domestic and international tourists through saffron cultivation. According to export farmers, the size, color and quality of saffron plants as well as flowers in Yang Yang are very similar to those grown in Kashmir, boosting chances of successful cultivation in Sikkim. While detailed scientific evaluation and commercial viability assessment are awaited, flowering of saffron plants in Yang Yang has already lifted aspirations of tourism stakeholders in Sikkim. With Saikat Sarkar, this is Namo Dikshit for North East Diary from AR News, Sikkim. When it comes to the subject of sports in India, we never forget the contributions of sportspersons of Manipur. Some of the sportspersons hailing from Manipur, like boxer MC Maricom, woman footballer N.G. Bala have made India proud in the world. The state never remained silent in the sports field and now there is a huge wave of mixed martial arts. It has become one of the fastest growing sports events in Manipur and women sportspersons have also joined the event. 
Here is the report of this new sports euphoria from an Imphal correspondent JJ Thokcham. Mixed Martial Arts MMA is a full contact combat sport combining the tactics of kickboxing, wrestling, Muay Thai and other martial arts form. MMA has become one of the most popular sports in the world and the tournament Ultimate Fighting Championship UFC is known to everyone. The Super Fight League and Matrix Fight Nights are also popular in India. With the increasing of popularity of these events, many youngsters of Manipur now started training as MMA fighters. The web has further increased in the state after the state fighter Roshan Mainam created victory in the recently held one championship. One of the trainer of MMA fighter in Manipur and international gold medalist in kickboxing and Frank Mangang said that the popularity of MMA began from 2017 onward in Manipur. MMA is Manipur in 2017. The first MMA is called the MMA. It 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 is called the MMA. फ्रोमेन सिखाने का पूरा मौका इसी एमएमए पे ही मिलता है क्योंकि इसमें डिसीजन वगैरह सब फियर होगा बहुत अच्छा फिल्म बनता है इस एमएमए लाइन पे और आगे जाता है उस उनका गरीबी पूरा दूर करता है Women sports person have also joined training as एमएमए फाइटर्स इन स्टेट लिविंग अदर मार्शियन स्पोर्ट्स some of them have already clinched medal in national tournaments and it created good impression among budding sports person speaking to north east diary national gold medalist jojo raskumari said that she never disheartened on choosing the mma मैं पहले किकबॉक्सिंग खेलती थी पर मैं ऐसा स्पोर्ट्स में नाम रखना चाहती हूँ जो लोगों को लगता है कि लड़कियों के लिए खेलना मुश्किल है इसलिए मैंने मिक्स मार्शल आर्ट चुना मैं अभी तक दो बार चैंपियन बन चुकी हूँ मिक्स मार्शल आर्ट ऐसा एक स्पोर्ट्स है जिसमें सबसे ज्यादा मेंटल और फिजिकल फिटनेस चाहिए क्यूँकी इसमें हर तरह का मार्शल आर्ट इंक्लूडेड है Despite being tough even interest among the women sports person in MMA has once again shown the equality of gender in sports and effort to bring more development of the sports event in Manipur for AIR news north east diary JJ Thokram from Imphal Women self help groups have contributed a lot during the lockdown period a guwahati correspondent manas pratim sharma takes a look the women self help groups have made noteworthy contribution particularly during the lockdown period in assam while people are facing hardship in managing fruits and vegetables they have produced local vegetables at gulaghat district they have not only helped the people in getting their essential food items but also increased their household income The block program manager at West Golaghat Development Block, Gyandeep Nath, has said that the self-help groups have also produced face masks to prevent the spread of the COVID-19. ASRM primarily aims to mobilize rural women by forming self-help groups, village organizations, and cluster-level federations, and further strengthening them by providing them various trainings. Currently, there are 1,602 SHGs, 94 BOs, and 4 CLFs under Golaghat West Development Block. ASRM ensures that the SHGs are financially provided revolving funds, community investment funds, and bank loans with the help of banks. Till date, the 1,412 SHGs have successfully received RS, 342 SHGs have received CIF, and 558 SHGs have received bank loans from different banks under the Kakhat law. After being financially strengthened, SHGs have been able to take up various livelihood activities. and expand their existing activity sh members under golaghat west law are involved in various farm livelihood activity like rice farming vegetable cultivation pecari goteri poultry farming tractory mushroom cultivation and vermicompost also sh members are involved in various non farm livelihood activity like handloom wooden handicrafts tailoring grocery shops stationery shops etc sh pos and clfs under asylum has played a very vital role in bringing societal change from time to time and i would like to cite a recent scenario of covid-19 pandemic where the sg members under bukakhat law have successfully produced 122878 masks and supplied 1 lakh masks to 20 gram panchayats under bukakhat law this is manas pradeep sharma for north east diary from ar news golaghat 
Today we bring an interview of Padma Shri Yeshi Dorji Thongchi by our correspondent Rakesh Dole. Yeshi Dorji Thongchi is an Arunachali writer who writes his books in Assamese language. He is the recipient of India's highly prestigious award Padma Shri 2020 for his work in the field of literature and education. He is also the recipient of Sahitya Academy Award. Mr. Thongchi was recently conferred the Sukhafa Award and Award Instituted by the Assam government. आप सभी को नोटिस डायरी में स्वागत है आज हमारे साथ है अरुणाचल प्रदेश की जाने माने साहित्यकार श्री यशे दरजे थंगसी जी आइए हम बात करते हैं यशे दरजे थंगसी जी से जिसको हाल ही में आसाम सरकार ने सुकाफा अवार्ड से सम्मानित किया है नमस्ते सर आपको आसाम सरकार का सुकाफा अवार्ड से सम्मानित किया गया है आपको अभी एक कैसा महसूस हो रहा है और ये अरुणाचल प्रदेश और आपका लिटरेरी जो जिंदगी का सफर है उसमें कितना मायने रखते है ये अवार्ड सुकाफा पुरस्कार जो मुझे मिला है मुझे बहुत ही अच्छा लगा क्योंकि ये एक गवर्नमेंट ने दिया है एक राज्य का गवर्नमेंट ने दिया है आसाम गवर्नमेंट ने दिया है तो जब राज्य सरकार या देश का सरकार किसी को सम्मानित करते हैं वो सम्मान बहुत बड़े होते हैं किसी एक इंस्टीट्यूशन या अनुष्ठान के सम्मान से ज्यादा वो सम्मान होते हैं इसलिए मुझे अच्छा लगा और ये जो सम्मान जो है मेरा साहित्य कृति के वजह से ही नहीं है देश का जो यूनिटी इंटीग्रिटी उसकी वजह से भी ये पुरस्कार दिया जाता है तो मैंने शायद देश का एकता में देश को एकजुट करने में कुछ अवदान दिया होगा जिसका स्वीकृति असम गवर्नमेंट ने दिया होगा सर आपने सही बोला है कि ये लिटरेरी अवार्ड नहीं है जो सुकापा अवार्ड है जिसको असम सरकार ने इसको समन्वय के नाम पे दिया गया है ऐसे ही बोला है कि आप अरुणाचल में रहते हुए भी असामीज लैंग्वेज में शुरू से ही लिख कर आए हैं और ये असम अरुणाचल में आपका जो लेखा है आपका जो साहित्य उपन्यास से ये सबसे दोनों स्टेट के बीच में एक समन्वय की वातावरण हुआ है ऐसा महसूस करके शायद आपको दिया हुआ है तो ये सुकाफा के साथ सुकाफा अवार्ड के लिए आपको चुना गया है यही बहुत बड़ा बात है और ये सब लोग जानते हैं कि आपने ये सब अरुणाचल और आसाम के बीच में एक सेतु बन के एक ब्रिज बन के उतरा है और अभी तक काम कर रहे हैं सर आगे का सफर क्या है सर आपका मेरा लेखन जो है वो जारी रहेगा लेखन के जरिए अगर देश का कुछ सेवा कर रहा हूँ भाषा का कुछ सेवा कर रहा हूँ साहित्य का कुछ सेवा कर रहा हूँ वो सेवा में जारी रखूंगा जब तक जिंदा है तब तक मेरा काम थमेगा नहीं मेरा काम है लिखना और मैं लिखते जाऊंगा सर उस दिन आपने जब एवॉर्ड लिया था उस आपका स्पीच में आपने ये बोला था कि असमी जी जो सेकंड मर्डर टाउन तो हालांकि हमको सबको मालूम है मर्डर टाउन वही होता है जो माँ का लैंग्वेज होता है माँ का जो भाषा है वही मदर टंग होता है तो दो दो मदर टंग कैसे हो सकते हैं एक्चुअली मदर टंग ये आप जिस भाषा में सबसे ज्यादा आप एक्सप्रेस कर सकते हैं अपना दिल का बातें उसी को मादर टंग कहा जाता है यूजली ये बात नहीं है कि आपका मादर का जो टंग है आप उसी को वो लेगा और वही मादर टंग है ये बात नहीं है जी मैं जिस भाषा में सबसे ज्यादा मैं एक्सप्रेस कर सकता हूँ वही मेरा मादर टंग हो जाता है जी तो मेरा माँ का मादर टंग सेटुकपेन था मैंने छोटा में सेटुकपेन में भाषा बोलना शुरू किया मगर आते आते जब असमिस सीख दिया तो असमिस भी मैंने एडोप्ट कर दिया असमिस में लिखना शुरू किया तो असमिस मेरा एडोप्टेड मादर टंग से हो गया ये तो सर आपने काफी किताब लिखा है सर मोस्ट ऑफ द बुक्स अरुणाचल की कहानी और अरुणाचल की दृश्यपथ में ही आपने लिखा है तो ये असम और अरुणाचल के बीच में क्योंकि असमिस लैंग्वेज में लिखने के बाद उसका रीडरशिप ज्यादा असम से ही होता है लेकिन कहानी जो पढ़ते हैं अरुणाचल की पढ़ते हैं तो आपने जो अरुणाचल को एक वाइडर जो रीडर्स है ज्यादा जो पाठक है किताब उनके लिए लेके जा रहा है तो ये बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन है ही तो आगे आपको क्या लगता है कि आपने जो किया है इससे थ्रो योर लिटरेरी वर्क आपका साहित्य कर्मो से बाकी आसाम और अरुणाचल का जो रिलेशन है तो आगे जाके इसका इम्पेक्ट होगा या हो रहा है ऑलरेडी हो ही रहा है इम्पेक्ट तो ऑलरेडी हो रहा है आसाम का बहुत लोगों ने अरुणाचल के बारे में सीखा है अरुणाचल का जीवन शैली कैसे है अलग अलग जनजाति का अलग अलग जीवन शैली कैसे है संस्कृति कैसे है मेरे लिखन के थ्रो से और लुमेडा का लिखन के थ्रो से उन लोगों ने जाना है अप्रिशिएट किया है और खाली आसाम का ही नहीं है अभी ये जो मेरा किताब दूसरा दूसरा भाषा में भी अनुवाद हो रहा है और उन लोगों को भी अभी उसका ज्ञान हो रहा है तो इसी के थ्रो से क्या होगा कि अरुणाचल को मैंने ज्यादा एक्सपोजर दिया है 
जो एक्सपोजर एक प्रबंध लिख के एक आर्टिकल लिख के नहीं दे सकता है आर्टिकल में क्या होता है कि लोग वो जो है सूखा रोटी के जैसे है जी अगर एक उपन्यास लिखेगा एक कहानी लिखेगा वो जो है सूखा रोटी के साथ आपका मीट मछली डिश सब लगा हुआ है जी ठीक इसी तरह मेरा उपन्यास मेरा कहानियां जो है वही काम कर रहा है तो लोगों ने अरुणाचल के बारे में और अच्छा तरह से अंदरूनी अंतर में जाके अंदरूनी कैसे चलता है जीवन उसको लोगों का नॉलेज हुआ है जी तो ये तो गलत होगा जैसे मैंने आपको क्या किया साम अरुणाचल में ही इसका इम्पेक्ट है जैसे आपका काफी बुक किताब जो दूसरा हिंदी इंग्लिश अंग्रेजी हालांकि बंगला लैंग्वेज में भी बेंगली लैंग्वेज में भी ट्रांसलेट हुआ है तो आपका जो रीडरशिप है जो पाठक है देश की कोने कोने में फैला हुआ है या हैदराबाद विश्वविद्यालय में भी आपका किताब एज ए टेक्स्ट बुक वहां पे पढ़ने देता है यूनिवर्सिटी सो so, मेरा और एक आपसे ये थोड़ा जानना था कि आप अरुणाचल प्रदेश लिटरेरी सोसाइटी का भी प्रेसिडेंट है तो ऑलरेडी पूरा देश भर में आपको सब लोग जानते हैं साहित्य अकादमी का भी आप मेंबर हैं वहां में तो थ्रो अरुणाचल प्रदेश लिटरेरी सोसाइटी तो आगे जाके अरुणाचल प्रदेश का लिटरेरी को प्रमोट करने के लिए जो नया राइटर है उन लोगों के लिए आपने कुछ कुछ काम किया है हमको इससे सुनने में आया है तो थोड़ा बताइए उसके बारे में हाँ अरुणाचल में साहित्य के बारे में कुछ आदमी लोगों का ध्यान नहीं था साहित्य किसे बोलता था लोगों को कुछ मालूम नहीं था लिखक क्या होता है ये जानवर होता है कि आदमी होता है और न सुख आदमी को मालूम भी नहीं था उसके बावजूद जो नया जनरेशन है हम लोगों का स्कूल कॉलेज में जो पढ़ रहा है उन लोगों का बीच में एक जागरूकता था उन लोग लिखना चाहता था उन लोग साहित्य सृष्टि करना चाहता था मगर उन लोगों को कुछ अरुणाचल में मंच नहीं मिल रहा था तो मेरा बहुत दिन से यही वो था कि अरुणाचल में एक ऐसे मंच तैयार करना चाहिए जहां उन लोगों को भी साहित्य के बारे में अपना जो सृष्टि कर्म है कविता लिखते हैं कोई कहानियां लिखते हैं उपन्यास लिखने के लिए भी कोशिश करते हैं उन लोगों को भी एक मंच तैयार करना चाहिए उन लोगों के लिए और उन लोगों को आगे और लेके जाना चाहिए और अरुणाचल में तो ऐसे आदमी नहीं है कि जो आगे आकर उन लोगों को हाथ में खींच आगे ले जा सके साहित्य कर्म में जी तो मैंने इसलिए अरुणाचल प्रदेश लिटरेरी सोसाइटी गठन किया अपना कुछ दोस्तों के साथ मिलके और ये अभी मुझे ये अच्छा लग रहा है कि अभी जागरूकता आ गया है अरुणाचल में साहित्य के बारे में जागरूकता आ गया है खाली लोग ही नहीं सरकार भी जागरूक हो गया है कि साहित्य के बारे में हम लोगों को कुछ करना चाहिए तो अभी लोग कविता लिखना शुरू किया है कहानियां लिखना शुरू किया है और काफी जगह में इनका प्रचार भी मिला है किसी किसी ने राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर पुरस्कार भी मिला है ये हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ा अचीवमेंट है Avian diversity in the world is recorded to be as many as 10,426 different species, wherein the Indian subcontinent is the house of 1,375 species. This is 13% of the world's bird population. According to a report, India had the availability of 1,349 species of birds only a few decades back. Though there are reports that many species are found missing in the last few years. The country still has huge varieties of birds in the present varied geographical and climatic conditions. The northeastern state Mizoram, which is a part of the rich Indo-Myanmar biodiversity, is undeniably a bird watcher's paradise for extensive varieties and rarely found species. In fact, the diversity and the huge population of bird species is regarded as a rich heritage of Mizoram in terms of biodiversity. However, like many hotspot areas, Mizoram has also been facing challenges to upkeep the rich reservoir of avian population because many species are now on the verge of extinction. 
For more details, let us hear a report from our ISOL correspondent. Mizoram is part of the Mizoram Manipur Kachin Rainforest ecoregion, which is reported to have the highest bird species richness of all ecoregions in the Indo Pacific region. According to the latest report, the state holds 671 species of birds. They come under 68 families and among them are 4 frugivorous families, 40 families are insectivores or predatory and 23 omnivores families. The state is just as famous for its birds with some great rarities. Experts said that Several factors and variability within the state's habitat such as topographical, climatic and forest have contributed to avian diversity and richness. The most attractive and typical species of birds found in the state is Mrs. Hume's pheasant which is regarded as the state bird. Other spectacular birds are called as Blight's trogopan, Blight's kingfisher, Rufus vented and pot-breasted laughing thrushes. Other species like crested finchbill, olive and flavescent bulbul, and purple-throated sunbird are commonly found in the state. However, according to the BirdLife International report, 4.6% of Mizoram birds are being threatened with extinction. The small population of Blight Trugapan are now confined to the cliff of Pongpui National Park and Lengteng Wildlife Sanctuary. A research scholar in zoology, Dr. Lal Omoya, who did his research on birds of Mizoram, is also working for conservation of birds in the state. He observed that the shifting cultivation induced uncontrolled forest fire and hunting have created havoc to the dwindling population of birds. This is reported that a loss of large, tall and old fruiting trees and logging and timber production resulted in the reduction of large birds like the great Indian hornbill and the vulnerable rufous-necked hornbill. He further opined, Along with my fellow bird waters and conservationists, we founded an NGO named Conservation Mizoram and we are presently working on conservation and scientific studies of the wild fauna of Mizoram and their habitat. The main threat faced by the wildlife of Mizoram are uncontrolled hunting, deforestation and wildfire. Talking about birds, recently the hunting pressure increases many fold with the introduction of scope mounted air rifle. To save our wildlife, especially the birds, the government have to ban the possession of air rifle. Conservationists observe that the birds play an important role as a pest control agent pollinators and afforestation agents. They maintain that the scientific studies and efforts to conserve the declining avian population is the need of the hour to save the rich biodiversity of the state. For Nordis Diary, this is Irene from AIR News, Aizol. To get accurate, reliable and wide coverage of news, tune in to AIR News 24-7 and FM Gold and listen to the major bulletins at 8.30 a.m., 2.00 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. in English and 8.00 a.m., 2.30 p.m. and 8.00 p.m. in Hindi of half an hour each. And uh, before we end, uh, here are some interesting facts about the Northeast. The literal meaning of Mizoram is the land of the hill people. Fireworks and crackers are banned in Mizoram since 2009. And uh, you were listening to our program, The Northeast Diary. Here we bring you the latest developments from India's unexplored Northeast region. And... Uh, I hope you like the program. Do write in to us with your comments and suggestions at News Services Division, All India Radio, New Broadcasting House, Parliament Street, New Delhi, 110001. With that, we come to the end of this edition of Northeast Diary. Do join us next week to hear more stories from this enchanting part of India. Bye-bye.